Last week, I came across this video by Josh where he takes us along in his creation process for videos. He shows us how he uses OBS to bake both his camera as well as his screen into a single video. And also, if he moves his camera around on the screen, he does so while recording, meaning that the editing process is actually super simple. And that is something that I have not done until now because I recorded everything separately, thinking that if I ever needed to use an asset separately, I could do so. I could, for example, zoom in on my screen without zooming in on my face. But as it turned out, I pretty much never have to do that. So this video was quite an epiphany to me because this now means that I can go into the picture in picture mode without needing to do anything during editing because everything is already baked into this video. So when seeing that video, I realized that this is actually a really great approach to save me a lot of time. However, one of the things that I also like doing is animate my face when it goes from a full screen view to picture in picture mode, for example, so the cut is less harsh. So I embarked on a little adventure within OBS and I actually managed to make that animation happen. Because even while I'm talking, I can just animate to the picture in picture mode or even I can animate my face to the left and everything just keeps working. And like I said, I don't need to do this within editing anymore. And that actually makes me super happy. So in this video, I want to show you the things that I did add on top of Josh's setup to make this animation happen. To make that work, I of course need to bring in OBS and be prepared for the Drost effect to see me multiple times. What you see here on the left side is actually the three different scenes that I'm currently using. These four are my old setup and these are my new. And what happens is if I switch to, for example, the full screen me, that you see me full screen, of course, but that also this animation happens. Also, what you notice is the very small border around my face right now where you actually still see OBS. And that is because the OBS window can't get a lot smaller than this. But I'm actually using Raycast to also center windows with some spacing around it, like Josh showed in his video as well. So for other windows, you won't see it behind my face right now. But switching between the different views just moves my face around and the camera just stays in place. So let's see how I set that up. The easiest way to show this to you is by creating a new scene. We're gonna call this scene test one. So in this new scene, I added both my camera as well as my screen recording back so you can see me again, but I'm just gonna move it to the side for now so you can see my screen. What you see here is that I added both my MacBook screen, which I just added as a screen capture. And that is exactly the same thing that I use in every scene. But for the camera, I actually added a new camera meaning that if you see the existing, I have webcam one, two, three, which I use in the other scenes. And for this one, I added test camera one, meaning that I don't reuse the cameras over the scenes. Next, we need a second scene so we can toggle between them. So let's quickly do that, which we are going to call test two. And once I click OK, the screen will again go black. So I will pick you up right after I added the camera back in again. So I again added the MacBook screen in again, which is the same source as we use in the test one scene. And now we are going to add another video capture and we're going to create a new one, test camera, camera two. And it's important that you use the same name as this camera, but just use a different index here. And why I will show you in a second, because if I add that, and then select the camera again, you finally see me. First, let's make this a little bit smaller so you can see me also do stuff within OBS. Let's move it here, for example, because if I would now toggle between these two scenes, you will see that my camera already moved, even though we didn't set up anything for this yet. And the reason for that is because I already have set up my scene transitions. If you go to scene transitions, you see that I've added the move transition. And that move transition comes from an OBS plugin. That plugin is called move, which I will also link below as well. And if you install that, you immediately get the move scene transition. So if we go back to OBS, then you see we have the three dots where we have some properties for this move animation. If we open that and let me position this correctly, then you see that there is three check marks here, match if the source name, and then what I have enabled here is with numbers removed from end matches the other source name, meaning that our test camera one will match test camera two if you remove the numbers. And that's the key here, because if it matches the two, then it will animate between them once it goes to a different scene. And how it animates between them, you can configure if you scroll down to matched items, you can set the easing, but also you can set the transition to move which means that it really moves the element around. 
And that is what we're using here. Also, you have some settings for appearing as well as disappearing items. So if they don't have a match, then you could, for example, let them fade in and fade out or do any other funky stuff. But the main important thing here is to configure these matched items as well as use the correct names for your sources. So since this is already set up, and since I use camera one here, and in the other scene, we use camera two, we automatically get this nice animation or nice animation, at least it's working. To make it look really nice, we shouldn't only be able to resize it, we should also be able to crop it and give it rounded borders, for example. The thing is though, that we shouldn't do this with the regular transform settings within OBS, but I'm actually using a different plugin for this called Advanced Mask. And also that plugin you can find on the OBS website and I'll also make sure to link it below as well. So to show you what this plugin does, I'm first gonna make my screen a little bit smaller or my face, I mean, so you see what's happening. Because what we can do is we can go to the camera and then go to filters. And then in here, we can say add filter advanced mask. And that advanced mask, it will add some default settings, but we can just change that to make it wider or maybe or just make it tall and smaller. Yeah. And we can also use that to give some border radius. Oh, and then of course I need to make sure I didn't extend it beyond its full height. So 1080 is the height of the asset. And then we have some rounded quarters. And with that, you already see that my face now looks a little bit better. However, if we switch to the other scene, you notice that the mask only flips at the end. But before we can animate that, we're first going to add a mask to this camera as well. And this time we're again going to add the advanced mask, but we're going to make it slightly different. We're actually going to make it wider than that it's tall. And we're also going to add some more radius. And with that, you see a really funny looking image. But again, if we would switch between the scenes, you see that it animates the movement, but it doesn't animate the mask. And that is where this next step comes in. We're going to go back into filters and we're going to add another filter. That filter that we're going to add is called move value. This is also added by the move plugin. If we select that, we're going to name this appearing. So this will be the layout that should be applied when this camera is appearing, meaning we pretty much want to apply this mask. So if we click OK, we can select the filter and that filter should point to the thing we want to manipulate. In this case, the advanced mask. Then we should say if we only want to change the single setting or everything. In this case, we take everything and then we click get values here. That will, if you scroll down, set all of the settings equal to what the advanced mask currently has, meaning that we copy the exact same values. If you then scroll down, there's a few settings down here, but the main thing to look at is start trigger because you can change that into move appearing, meaning that if it's appearing on screen and moving, then it should apply this setting. So we're going to enable that and then we're going to close this for now because we're also going to switch to the other scene, then to our camera, filters, and we're going to do the same thing. Add a move value, call it appearing. Okay. Filter, advanced mask, all, get values. And then we go down to start trigger, move appearing. And if we then close it and we would switch between scenes, there's still nothing happening. And that is because we still need to do one more thing. We need to go into the filters again and we need to copy this appearing variant because this is what should be applied to the other camera if it's disappearing. So we're going to copy this. Then we go to test two, the camera filters, paste. We're going to rename it to disappearing. And then we need to go down to the settings and then we say move disappearing instead of appearing for the disappearing variant. And then we're going to copy this one because that needs to be the disappearing one for test one. Filters, paste disappearing and then again we need to change the settings to move disappearing and then if we would switch between the two variants you see that the animation now works it's only a little bit fast and the reason for that is because by default the speed is 300 milliseconds 
while the move duration is 1000. So for that, we need to go in again, go to filters, and then we need to change the duration for all of them and change it to 1000. Same for the disappearing one. Close, and then we go to the other scene. Filters, appearing, and disappearing. And if we do that, we suddenly see that we have these nice looking animations and that everything just works. If you're only having two scenes, this is the only thing you have to do. But since I have three scenes, I can't really use the move disappearing because I don't know where it should animate to, because it should always animate towards the next state, so to say. And I don't know which state that is. But if you would jump into any of my existing settings, you also saw that the camera now didn't transition because these are called webcam one, two, three. The other ones were test camera one and two, meaning the names don't match. But if we would inspect and go to filters here, you see that I have one, two, three filters that are the exact names of my different scenes. Meaning that if I switch scene, what I'm actually doing is I'm using the stream deck to change all of the cameras in every scene towards the scene filters that I'm currently transitioning to. So let's quickly take a look at my Stream Deck settings because I think then it makes a lot more sense. In here, I have three buttons and they are the trigger for my scenes. If I click this, you see that it's actually a multi-action which triggers multiple actions. And if we go here, you see that the last one is the OBS scene that switches to Fool Me. And then I have one, two, three cameras which are the filters for every camera and every scene. So if I click this, you see that it sets webcam one to fool me. If we go here, you see webcam two is also set to fool me. And webcam one, two, three also refers to each different scene. Meaning that if I switch to the fool me scene, that all of the cameras will also switch to that filter and thus they animate into place. And because of that, I can simply use the Stream Deck to change in scene, the camera will animate, or it goes to the corner again, or for example, to the left side. And this I think is gonna be a huge time saver for me because all of these animations are now also in this video and I don't need to play around with it anymore within DaVinci Resolve. And that feels so great. So I hope that this video was useful to you and that you're also able to up-level your own OBS setup with this. Let me know if you're also gonna use these animations or what you even think about them. I'll promise that I won't make you go mad with all of the different animations. Uh, because you can also overdo it, of course. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.